Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tanasia. If you guys are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I did notice that we are at 200 plus subscribers. So I would like to, you know, thank you guys. I always thank y'all in every video that I do, I try to, um, but I really do appreciate you guys supporting my channel and actually taking the time to watch my videos. So I just wanted to come on here starting off thanking you guys for being a very good support system for my channel and getting my videos out there that's a attracting other people and to subscribe to my channel yeah i know i get tongue-tied so if y'all been here since day one y'all should be used to it by now but um just to let you guys know this is going to be the part two to the clinical sims um tutorial thing that i'm trying to do to kind of give y'all some tips on how to study what i used how i studied and just basically kind of give y'all a foundation of what helped me you know start to adjust my um way of studying along the way um in the first video i wanted to kind of be more detailed in the first video i didn't feel like it was i didn't really like it because i felt like the quality was off for one i felt like it was focusing more on my laptop where i was kind of a little blurry in there so i didn't really get to see the finishing touches on how it looked uploaded until it got on youtube but i really didn't even know it up, uploaded on youtube because it was stuck so many times when i was trying to upload it and i know sometimes videos the the quality of some videos will upload crazy so when i saw that somebody had commented under it and i was like well dang i didn't even know it uploaded and i went and watched it i was like this is not my best video so I was like if I ever got a chance again I would probably redo it but based on me and the information that I gave I felt like the information wasn't going to change and um I felt like you know I got positive feedback from it so I'm just going to leave it up there but for this video is going to be the part two which is the clinical sims part and I'm definitely going to go in more detailed with this video than I did the last one. And I'm going to tell you guys why. The TMC is pretty much self-explanatory when it comes to the materials that they give you in whatever um, package you guys are using. If you're using Lindsay Jones, I'm not really familiar with that. So like I stated in the first video, I don't know how Lindsay Jones is set up. I don't know what their method is as far as how to study the ranges, what kind of audio information they're giving. So that I don't have any idea about that. I can only go based off of what we used, which was the Kettering system. So if you guys are using Kettering, then this will be very helpful for you guys. If you're using Lindsay Jones or um, Gary Pearson's whatever system you guys are using the information should be well up well within the same if not a little bit off so feel free to please use the resources regardless if you have a system that you guys are using outside of Kettering but when I do this actual review on what I use to help me pass my test on the first try it will definitely help you because there were a lot of information that I got with outside resources that helped me study for my exam too so outside resources are very helpful just alone just you know supplemental to what you use so I'm going to try my best to give you guys all the information that I used um, and I also have some links that I am going to link to this video as well if you guys have not looked at my community post I did put a post up there letting you guys know that I did update the first part one video with all the links that I did promise you guys towards the end of the video and it goes to every single video that I made with study tips and links to other YouTube videos, um, channels, and links to Facebook to join those groups and everything. And it's like a worldwide of different students from different schools, universities that are studying for their exit, um, TMC, Clinical Sims. I also linked you guys to the Jana um, Langford group. She's helped a lot of people pass their exams. And then um, a lot of other people that have joined other groups that are located within Jana's group. So please be on the lookout for that. Um, I linked everything that I could possibly think of in the channels that I linked of mine. There are an ass of links within those videos to the YouTube channels, to the um, disease channels everything that i could think of that i used for both my 
board exams are linked in those videos and every single thing that I posted on the, under there. So if you guys have not checked that out, please go click those, click those links and check them out because they are very helpful and you will thank me later. Um, so with further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, I feel like, hold on, before I start, uh, I need to put <laughs> lip chap on my lips because boy, y'all know, anybody know, when you finna get into some wording, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, with further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So, with the clinical sims, if you guys are using Kettering, like I said before, it comes with this lecture notes book that has all the diseases, all the, um, hold on, this part will come later. It has like all the diseases, um, starting off, let me show y'all. It has like all the diseases and everything starting off with um, adult chronic airway diseases. It has like all of this set up where you have all of it lined up, the asthma chart, you know, it just goes into depth about all the diseases, everything that, you know, you should already know based on your clinical clinicals, your disease courses that you've taken in your program and just so far what you've looked at in depth in the study guide. So just to put that out there, I studied this book for probably a month before I actually scheduled my Sims and it did not help me whatsoever. The reason why it did not help me, it doesn't give you in depth it, it does it didn't match with the actual Kettering clinical sims practice exam and even the MBRC the reason why I got frustrated with this was because I had studied this book from back to front back from back to front front to back like I studied this all day every day before I even moved back home and when I moved back home I studied this book for hours and when I took my first practice um practice questions on the Kettering site, I did not pass it. I missed a lot more questions just with the information gathering, the um, how to fix it, stuff like that, that I've known to be true of what I read in the Kettering clinical sims part and it, I did not pass it. And that was frustrating to me. And I thought maybe I didn't look at something right. So I restudied this book and it was the same thing. If anything, I probably got like maybe one or two more questions right than I did before. So it still wasn't to my liking because I want to see a significant difference when I switch up my studying style. So that did not help me whatsoever. And I had to kind of regroup. Um, I did have a few other people that were um, that have graduated from the program maybe two to three years maybe more before I did so I kind of reached out to them to ask them what materials that they use what did they um, think was easier for them to kind of grasp the concept of how to study for this and what did they use so some people were telling me that they use something called um, let me make sure I get it right it's a PowerPoint um, conjunction of the TMC and Clinical Sims by a um, RRT called Mark Vargas. I think he is an instructor as well. I'm not sure, and I it, I don't think it even um, lists what type of what university he practices at. But he has a whole website that he's created where he's written out all the notes for every single respiratory therapy exam that you can take for neonatal critical care. Um, PFT, anything that you want to take as far as a respiratory therapist to get your certification under the MBRC, he has written out a full PowerPoint of information gathering, how to fix it, how to do everything. And um, I did not look into his until one of the respiratory therapist that I work with that graduated before me mentioned it. So that is one of the links that I am going to put below. This link is more of a two, I think this one is a um, either a 2015 or 2017 version. I don't think there's anything much different in here than what he's got up there now, but I do know he charges for these um, PowerPoints. And I know now that he has separated the TMC from the clinical sims. So the one that I got had everything the way he had it first. So um, 
he does charge like I think 24 or 25 dollars or maybe 40 something dollars for sure the exact price it might be cheaper but I do know he does charge for the PowerPoints and with me being generous I do know how it, it gets expensive trying to purchase different types of um sites that you're trying to go on to study for stuff and try to see if it works and sometimes things just don't work out and you feel like you waste the money on, on that so me being this being a gift to you guys because it was a gift to me I'm going to link this PowerPoint in this video for you guys to download it is a PDF version so I don't think nobody should have an issue clicking that link and downloading it because it's from my flash drive It's not linked to a third party on um, site only a PDF savable document so you guys should be able to click that link save it to your flash drive and print out to your discretion of what you need so I am going to link that below as my gift to you guys so that's something that I think you guys will look forward to because this his PowerPoints is actually what helped me pass my test and I'm also going to give you guys some um, other um, advice as far as what helped me um, I didn't even look at catering for these lecture notes I just felt like it just wasn't helpful to me at all because it's almost like it was a waste of material if I would say and then also I don't know if y'all noticed but it is not that much material out for clinical sims it's like a buttload of information for TMC but it's nothing out for clinical sims so that's where it gets kind of crazy at because you have all the information in the world for the TMC, but you don't have what you need for the clinical sims. And that's where the dynamics get a little bit more difficult because you're like, oh my God, there were so much other um, sites and resources for TMC, but for the clinical sims, there's just none. So I had a struggle with that, trying to find out what worked what sites offered certain things and what I could use to study for my test because I felt really lost studying for this clinical sims because my book wasn't helping me and then also if you guys pass your TMC do not shy away from this book because I studied so much for the clinical sims I kind of lost some information that I studied in this book when I first took my first board exam I use this book to help me study for the TMC not TMC but for the clinical sims um, it was more so as a refresher because you're learning how to fix the problem how to inf how to gather so much information that that's what helps you and you can lose a lot of points on not gathering enough information so that is why I'm telling you guys what to do and what helped me because not gathering enough information will cause you to fail this test and even if you don't gather enough but you fix the person the MBRC wants to see how did you get to that point what did you how did you what lab results what clinical presentation did your patient show you to indicate that this is what you needed to do to fix this problem the MBRC wants you to take it from step one all the way through they don't want you to say okay you've seen this a million times this is what you're going to do to use it to fix it whatever they want to see you from start to finish on how you're going to fix this problem and how did you get to this point if you fix the person but you didn't gather enough information you will lose a lot of points and the MBRC will count that against you and you will fail and that is what I noticed on some of the practice exams that I took when I was trying to see as far as the difference between the answers I got right and wrong compared to using this and using the Mark Vargas PowerPoint so what I did was, of course, like I said, I studied the Mark Vargas PowerPoint and I also continued to use my study guide as a resource to whatever I was a little bit of a gray area for me. I made sure that I reviewed this also to keep me sharp with certain stuff. So when I did take my practice exams for the clinical sims, I knew exactly what I needed to do. Now, a second thing that I did, well, actually third, 
Like I told y'all, I reached out to other therapists that passed their clinical sims before me to see what they used. I was told that they purchased both form A and B of the clinical sims off of the MBRC site. So what they did was they purchased both of the exams, they took both of them, and they did not allow whether they passed or failed to bother them because you're only using those forms as study references. And um, what I did was I used other forms that other people took, which if you have people you are close to that will send you their forms that they took to compare to the ones that you took, because kid you not, the right answers are not gonna, they're not gonna tell you what was an option or what was the reasoning behind why you didn't pick this when you failed these exams. You're just gonna get your score and that's it. You're not gonna know what areas you were messed up in unless you take a practice exam at your school and your teacher is able to print out like an administrative um, form that kind of shows you what areas you kind of need to focus more on. And that's what we had for our exit exam. So that is the reason why I was able to focus more on those areas, pass my exit exam, get out of there and start studying again for my TMC. So what I did was I had Mark Vargas's on PowerPoint, printed it out, I went and took both Form A, Form B, and I had my friends that sent me their Form A and Form B. I actually had two computers, my main computer and my laptop, and what I did was I used, I went through every single question of the same and I compared the two. I compared everything, answers that I did not choose as the right answer that my friend did choose, and I wrote those um. I wrote those answers in the section that I was studying and I'm going to show you guys an example um, for let's see okay so the first one COPD oh hold on COPD um, I went through on both the forms my friends test my test and everything and then any questions that I missed out on that I didn't pick as the right answer, I wrote them down next to the actual disease that we were starting off with. And I just went through and did the exact same thing, highlighted, added extra information, did everything that I needed to do to make sure that when I studied it through, I didn't have to keep going back to the areas in the books that had that same information when I can just write it down on the paper and just go back and look at it. Um, if it helps, like for bron bronchiectasis and bronchitis, I went in my textbook and drew a picture with the transversal, um, transparent sticky notes. And I drew, I traced it, colored the sections just to have an outlook on how the alveoli look on a daily basis. So whenever, anytime I read a question that describes bronchiectasis or bronchitis, a person that has a real productive cough, that might be green and yellow, um, tan colored, cream colored, thick, you automatically know they just, they have to have something on top of it. So anytime I have an area that I'm studying, whether it's COPD, um, any of the C babes, I make sure that I put like some type of illustration next to it. So that way I know exactly what they're describing when they start to ask me questions. Um, anything that I went through on the form A, form B, like I said, you write notes next to it. Anything that was in the study guide, I would write next to it. I would write all of that stuff next to it to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. Now, don't get me wrong. It's any information that you get is not going to have 100% the same information that you have in your study guide. Sometimes they're missing some information. Sometimes they might have more information than what you have. And it's up to you on what you're going to do with it. With the information that was not on the PowerPoint that was correct, but still an additional, an addition to it, I wrote it down. Like I wrote the information from my study guide that wasn't on the Mark Vargas PowerPoint and I added it to the side in different colors and I made sure I put arrows next to all of it and I would write the page numbers of where I got it from. Like I would 
if I have to go back to my um, study guide catering book, I wrote down the page number of where I got it from, what area, which um, part in the book, because you never want to be studying and then you have your mind like set on what you're studying and then you have to rummage through paperwork and all of a sudden you just lose that concept of what you how you were studying because you were on it. So I had to make sure that if I'm going to study the way I'm supposed to, I'm going to make notes and then I'm going to write down the, the section that I got it out of and the page because that does help. You can go directly to it and it also helps like how I have these sticky tabs on my book. Put those sticky tabs on there and if you like to write on your tabs, write on your tabs. There's nothing wrong with being more detailed in your note taking because you have to do that. Like it's nothing wrong with that. I'm a visual, color coordinated, all of that. So whatever helps me, I do it. And as you can see, it did help me because I was able to refer back to certain sections without having to fumble through so much paperwork and having to re-ask certain situations that had nothing to do with what I needed to study. Y'all, my mouth get dry fast when I be talking a lot. So mind me. Um, next section, I did trauma, chest, because he goes through all of it. And one thing I will mention to y'all, don't get discouraged if the order is not the same and there's missing diseases out of your Mark Vargas PowerPoint that he doesn't mention that's not the same diseases in your Kettering or Lindsey Jones. Reason why I'm saying this is because Mark Vargas, hold on y'all. Mark Vargas is focusing on the main diseases that the MBRC is going to be focusing on the most. And the reason why he's doing this is because I will attest that when I took my clinical sims and for the TMC as well, a lot of my questions that I got through my board exam were mainly focused on a lot of diseases in the C-Babe area. It did not mention a lot of, I might, maybe got maybe one or two questions about frail chest, um, CHF, um, what else, um, um, MV, uh, wait, yeah, MVAs, I didn't get too much of C, I didn't get too much of outside diseases that was outside of C-Babe, it, I mainly got a lot of COPD, um, chronic bron bronchitis and a lot of asthma I got a lot of that so don't be discouraged if you don't see a lot of um of outside or inside diseases that might be missing from your disease book if anything I would still recommend that you study those diseases even if they're not mentioned in the Mark Vargas PowerPoint reason being because I feel like what you don't study is what you're going to get a lot of the questions on so if I were you guys, I would definitely study every disease that's in your Kettering, every disease that's in your Lindsay Jones, every disease that you've learned in your coursework over time in your program. Um, okay. And um, just basically just making sure that you guys are on point when you step foot in there because you want to at all times be prepared for anything and when I tell y'all I have scheduled my clinical sims so many times as far as rescheduling I never just scheduled it the one time and then left I rescheduled it so many times because I just didn't feel prepared and also it was out of fear too because I had so much going on and if you guys followed me throughout my entire journey, y'all know that I had issues with my moving expenses as far as the prices changing back and forth. I had problems with trying to get, you know, my furniture sold. I had so much stuff going on and I had family issues as well. So it was like everything on top of everything was just a lot. And when I finally did schedule my clinical sims, I was already working full time. And that was a challenge as well, but I did it. And a lot of people are able to work through tough situations and still come out on top, but it is challenging and, and I wouldn't recommend it at all. Um, but back to this, 
Um, I did write the notes and everything on the Mark Vargas PowerPoints. I went through every single disease. I wrote notes. I highlighted. I did everything. And sometimes I would even study it back to front, front to back. Like you have to study it almost like learning your ABCs backwards. It's difficult for you to say your ABCs backwards if you are the average person, but you can easily say it from front, from beginning to end. So when my teacher mentioned can you say your ABCs backwards? That clicked in my mind. So what you're saying is I need to study my material from the back of the book to the front multiple times, just as much as many times as I study it from front to back. Because it's only in our right mind to study. We are programmed to read from start, from front to back. We're never programmed or trained to read our textbooks from back to front. But when it comes to studying material, like PowerPoints, um, you can never study a book. I, I've never tried to study a chapter from back to front. I've never tried that. But material like this Kettering book and this, I did. That was the first time I ever did that. So that clicked for me. And when she said that, I automatically knew what to do. So I started studying my material from the back all the way how I did. Same method from from section A to J, I would do J first all the way to A. And I would break it up into groups like I did if I was studying from starting with section A first. Because when you start to train your brain to study J first all the way to the middle of the section of the book, and then once you get to the middle of the book and you start to get to the, the front, it starts to like flow it starts to flow and when you guys start doing that if y'all haven't already started please comment or write me and let me know how that worked for y'all because it worked really well for me so I really do think it's gonna work very well for y'all um I went through like every single thing wrote notes um highlighted I made sure that if it was anything that was very, very important, because all the information is important, but if it was like main stuff that Mark Vargas kind of focused on, I think that was mainly one of the things that I feel like was pretty good to focus on with highlighting certain things that focused more. And also, I know one of the things that you want to really focus on too is trauma to like head trauma, chest trauma, and surgical trauma because those areas fall into trauma but also you want to look at as far as what they want you to know i know with head trauma you have to be very very particular on how you gather information for that because they can trick you trip you up with other vocabulary words that mean the same thing as swelling may mean the same thing as um what is another word it's it's a whole bunch of other terms but also um you want to be very, very um, cautious of vocabulary because Kettering does prepare you for that. And I will say that that was another area in Kettering that I focused on. I focused on all the vocabulary. I mean, I didn't study all of it, but I just made sure I went through the ones that I did not know. And what I did was the vocabulary words that meant the exact same thing is some stuff. Like, for example, example, example. There's a definitely another word for vitamin C. I did have a question where it said that a patient had um, low absorbic. Hold on. Oh, Lord. I can't pronounce it, but it was um, another word. It's this word right here. Right here. It's another word for vitamin C. So you have to be very cautious on what you know and what other terms mean the same thing there's other words for acid fast bacillus um it starts with a z you want to know what that is it's it's a lot of other terms and medical terminology that mean the exact same thing that they will trip you up on and you'll end up getting the answer wrong and you could have gotten it right because you do know what what it is but it's just another term that's used to describe it and that's another thing that i made sure i studied and wrote down next to the mark vargas sections that were you know talking about it in here um for the form a and form b i do know they're 75 dollars a piece i'm sure y'all already know um don't get me wrong i do understand that it does cost 
to pay for a lot of things but like i told y'all if y'all are watching this video please go to the links in the part one video that i talk about for tmc the facebook groups that you join even jana being number one jana is going through all types of different form a's and b's that people have already taken so you can actually get those so she's going to actually go through like all of those different forms that people have taken and she's going to actually do um voice recordings going through it so if you happen to miss the live when she's going over it with the people that are um into the zoom call she uploads it and she leaves links to it but you have to go to her her group and join it and then inbox her any questions or concerns that you're having trouble with and then she will go through that with you and let you know the schedule when she's going to do her lives and everything like that and she will do it now me personally i did try jana myself and i did try other groups but jana was the main group that i was in and i just felt like her way of going through the I, I I will say that everybody learns different. I learn different. Everybody learns different. Me, per se, after trying Jana, it did not work for me. I tried her for probably about four months, maybe. And it just wasn't... Her method wasn't helpful to me, but it was helpful to a lot of people. So I won't say that Jaina does not know what she's talking about because Jaina is very informative. So I will say that as a um, just to kind of not make my review sound negative. But Jaina does know a lot of information that was very helpful as far as how to look at a disease, what they're asking, what type of um, direction to go in when you're reading these questions and how to decipher what they want mid question she did give some great tips on that for testing so i will say i did use those but as far as um doing any of the information that was given in the group i just felt like i don't do well i, I just don't do well studying in groups i don't do well with that so to me i'm more so of a loner and like i mentioned in my first video i do so well studying by myself the only time I ask for help is when I am confused or stuck on something and I would either ask someone that I know is very informative or I'll ask my teacher. And um, my teacher doesn't have a problem answering those questions. So it's just more so of me knowing who to ask and how much information to get. So that's one thing I will say about that. So with everything that I have um, used to study, it's definitely giving me a, a different perspective of how, you know, certain things are read, how certain things are done, how certain things are viewed to certain people. Because some people looked at questions and they kind of went in a di different direction than I did. So for me, I didn't quite understand that. So that's why I was saying like, studying in groups doesn't work for me because their train of thought is different from my train of thought so it might be something that i might catch on to but then they might have an issue with it and then they might feel like well they're getting it i'm not understanding it can you further explain but i might be ready to move on you know so i just try to study on my own if i can and any additional information that might be helpful for me, I pass it along to other people. And sometimes they work better alone. Because a lot of the people that I used to study with, as far as one or two people, they were saying that, you know, the information that I gave or the information that they gave me, we were able to kind of help each other. So that was something that I did like about working with another person. Max, study groups, two. Two people, me making the second person. So I'm not really no group person to study with. So it's like if I'm helping you or you helping me, I can only do it like that one on one. I can't do a whole group because it makes me it makes my brain scramble, if that makes any sense. So it's like I really do like the resources that I used and I made sure that I had all my information gathered to kind of help y'all. So like I said, Mark Vargas was very good, very helpful. And I feel like between him using my study guide, my study guide as a reference, 
purchasing form A and B, studying those constantly. And then also what I did was after I studied that, I think I studied, I took my test in April. I studied for the Sims from January all the way to April the 10th because I took my test on the 18th of April and I studied all the way up until hell I'm not even gonna lie I studied all the way up until the 17th because I wanted to make sure I was doing what I needed to do but I did pick one day to take form a at the library and then I took to take the test as if I was actually taking the test to get a feel for it I did the exact same thing with form um form B and I did the exact same thing when I took the actual clinical exam on the catering site I did take the actual catering um, exam on the actual site and the reason why I knew I was ready y'all caterings TMC and CSE are harder than the MBRC and I may have stated that in part one but Kettering tests are harder than MBRC. And also, Kettering does have, for the TMC, I forgot to mention to y'all, if y'all haven't already received y'all Kettering or started like maneuvering around the actual packaging online package, they do have their own Form A and Form B. So if you guys need to practice once y'all get closer to taking and scheduling y'all exam, take a and b and see how y'all do um because i did do that and whatever questions that i felt like i stumbled on i made note on my study material and i studied it um catering is is hard it's hard like studying and catering is hard as hell and so is taking the exams that they provide you as practice are hard as hell so that is why i said and one person did tell me that catering was way harder but when they took the mbrc they flew through it and that's kind of how it was for me because the first time I took the TMC, it felt like it was easy, but at the same time, I kind of froze on some of the questions, but I remembered to keep going. And then I also had a lot of anxiety too because this was the real thing. I was taking the real exam, but I took my stress gummies that I showed y'all when I did. It might be in one of the um, video links in part one, but I pretty much was like nervous but once I took the test I noticed I still had time left and I was scared to submit it before it was due but once I did it close to time being over I felt like you know I did what I needed to do and then make sure y'all listen to those audios because it's very important he gives you so many testing tips that's why I said like catering is the bomb.com when it comes to the TMC study material the audios everything but for clinical sims i feel like there can be major improvements but with the resources that i used and actually studying what the mbrc provided i felt like it was pretty good and um yes i did go through a lot of outside resources i signed up for rt to, uh, rt tutorials or something i'm not sure what a lot of those um sites are called because it's been a minute but I signed up for a lot of subscriptions to stuff and I felt like their study material just wasn't helpful because it wasn't on the same level as Kettering as far as the hardness. It was more so like, it, it didn't test the knowledge of the stuff that I was studying. So I kind of felt like, you know, I did spend a lot of money trying to study for the clinical sims. And that's why I was saying that there's so much material out there for, for the TMC, but there's not a lot for, um, it's not a lot for the clinical sims and um that is the reason why i would not recommend studying the clinical sim lecture notes for um for your clinical sims with catering it just wasn't helpful to me and it doesn't guide you as far as how um, mark vargas um helps you because with him his information will tell you how to gather information what to gather how to determine how to fix the problem how you know certain stuff he breaks down the information gathering alone not even before you get to like copd into the diseases it goes into temperature glucose heart 
vital signs, blood pressure, urine output, um, pyloria, augluria. I may be saying that wrong, but it's, he'll, he'll tell you that stuff because a lot of this stuff is linked to like DKA, end stage renal disease, um, hypertension, all of that stuff. He tells you what's linked to what and what you could focus on and what you need to focus on. So I felt like this PowerPoint was very, very helpful. So that is why I would definitely recommend paying attention to a lot of what he says in the audios so that you can take notes, do what you got to do, make notes in the, um, the Mark Vargas and anything else. So I would highly recommend that because it is helpful. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you guys are using Lindsey Jones, again, I don't know how Lindsey Jones works. We did get some information with Lindsey Jones in the Facebook study group. So they will provide a lot of stuff for you. I'm not sure if um, there are too much um, stuff that I would say did not work for me. But the main thing that didn't work for me was studying the, the diseases in here. But I just made sure that I kept staying very, very um, knowledgeable in the pharmacy area, which is in the study guide area, making sure that you know your formulas because I did not have that many formula questions on my CSC at all. I didn't have to calculate anything. The most stuff that you're going to have to really focus on is recognizing your vent settings based on the information that they give you in the clinical sims questions because that's very important. Um, because I'm trying to, I feel like the information I provided so far is what I used and is very cutthroat and very straightforward. So it's not very much more details that I can go into. I'm not going to go into, because I had one person ask me this on Instagram, but I'm not going to go into depth about, um, my notes and what I took and what I got written down because my notes might not make sense to y'all and then I don't want to confuse anybody so I feel like whatever notes y'all want to take y'all can take it to y'all own discretion on what y'all feel like works for y'all um I'm just going to give y'all the remainder of this video I'm going to just continue giving y'all tips on what to focus on for the test itself um make sure you focus on all the diseases like I said do not skip anything because you don't want to skip something and then that's the primary questions that you get do not skip over the calculations. Do not skip over the pharmacology. Know your know your medications. Know your steroids. Know your anti-inflammatory um, situations that you know are linked to diseases, primary disease, asthma. Because a person is always going to be inf inflamed with asthma because they have an airway issue. They're compromised. You know their airway is compromised at this point their lungs are compromised because they're always going to be inflammation there there's always going to be daily triggers that kind of make it harder for them to have a good quality of life if they're not complying with medications and what their doctor tells them to do you're going to have situations on the clinical sims where the patient is a child and their parent brought them in and sometimes you're going to have you're going to miss that information that they give you stating that the parent did not take the child to the to the pediatrician they didn't ask the questions of getting an emergency inhaler the child never had an emergency inhaler the parent missed on um, their dosage of their steroid that they weren't taking like there's so much things that they give you in the scenarios that you have to pay attention to and don't get me wrong those scenarios are probably going to be as long as a paragraph but it's very important that you read every single word that's in those scenarios because that is where you're going to get your information gathering that's how you're going to start that's how you're going to know what information to gather what they're asking what to do and you're going to automatically know what disease process they're talking about and I, I think on pediatrics I want to say I only had maybe two scenarios linked to pediatrics but I don't want to scare y'all I the two questions scenarios that I got were the same patient just a part two to the same scenario but a part two and um you're able to see like all the stuff that you gathered beforehand so don't get nervous about that you'll be able to see it um 
they will give you scratch paper if you guys have already taken your TMC they will give y'all scratch paper you only get one but if you need to get another one you can request another sheet and um, I wrote down everything and that's something that I forgot to tell y'all make a cheat sheet make a cheat sheet I wish I had my cheat sheet um, I wish I had an example of my cheat sheet um, let me see if I got the things. I think this is all from. Um, I think this was all notes that I took. But yeah, I would definitely make a cheat sheet. And when I say make a cheat sheet, I mean write down everything that you can remember that's quick information that you feel like will be very, very useful on the test. Like put your norms. Put down your um, nitric oxide um, chart on there. Put your tank formula. Put your formulas on there. Put your calculations. Put your um, normal ranges for COPD. Normal ranges for um, sleep apnea. All of that stuff that's linked together. Make a cheat sheet. And what you'll do is over time you can add to that cheat sheet while you're studying. But every day that you make your cheat sheet, rewrite your cheat sheet. I at least write my cheat sheet three times a day when I was studying. It might be a bit much, but I was writing my cheat, rewrite my cheat sheet every day, three times a day. And I was never taking another sheet of paper with my cheat sheet sitting next to me. I would study my cheat sheet of what all I wanted on there. And then I would take a clean piece of paper Put it on a kitchen table and I will start to write my cheat sheet. Write down everything I know and it helps keep you refreshed on how to, what your formulas are, what your normal ranges are, what your diseases are linked to, how to fix an issue, what medications belong to what, um, generic, brand, what, what's the major use for it. Like, make cheat sheets. So when you go in there and you get your scratch piece of paper, you leave the front for your scratch paper for for the back of that paper dump dump your cheat sheet put all and everything that you've been practicing on your cheat sheets dump it dump it on the paper on the back leave your front for like scratch paper if you need to write down calculations of the weight you know what i'm saying like if you have a person that's 71 kilograms you gotta calculate you gotta write it down on how many pounds or do your calculation on that with your range for your title volumes. That's mostly what I calculated when I was doing my clinical sims at the most, at the least, that's what I had to do. And um, that's a big um, recommendation for y'all to do. Make your cheat sheet, practice it. Even if you know it, keep practicing. If you practice three times a day and you feel like you got it, you've been doing it for a month or some change, cut it down to twice a day. But I wouldn't go no lower than twice a day because at that point you don't want to do it once a day and then you forget something the next day that you do your cheat sheet. So at the lowest, I would recommend you redoing your cheat sheet is twice a day, twice a day. Um, so make sure you practice your cheat sheets so when you sit in front of that test, Dump everything that you practice on your cheat sheet on your scratch paper and write as small as you can where it's readable to you and you can go back to it as a reference to answer another question that refers to something that's on your cheat sheet. So that was the number one thing. I don't even think I mentioned in the TMC, but you have to do that for both TMC and um, clinical sense because nothing's going to change as far as the information you need to know the only difference is your information gathering this time and it's not multiple choice you're clicking boxes you're um clicking the boxes and they're never you can't unclick the boxes like you can change your answers on tmc once you click it that's it and that's the scary part that i think kept making me reschedule my exam because of the permanent clicking so you have to be very very knowledgeable on what you're studying how to understand the information and what to do. Because nine times out of 10, once you make the decision to click whatever you click on the clinical sims, that's it, you can't go back. And with those clickings, you lose points. So you can lose a hell of a lot of points on just that one scenario that makes you bomb that test. So I would really highly recommend you practicing a lot before you actually take that test. Um, what else can I tell y'all? Um, 
make sure you buy those stress relief gummies if you guys are not already taking some because I made sure I, I took some the, the whole week prior to me taking my exam because you don't want to take it the day before because that's like a week's month's worth of um built up anxiety so one day of taking stress relief gummies is not gonna fix it. and that's what i would recommend i did take my stress relief gummies a week prior to me taking my clinical sims and then the night before i studied during the day but i cut my studying off at eight o'clock and um, between eight and nine, I took me a shower, got myself situated. I had already eaten dinner prior to one of my breaks that I was taking in between my studying. Took my shower, washed my face, said a good little prayer. And then what I did was I took melatonin, my stress gummies, and then I was able to go to sleep with no problem. I take muscle relaxers because like I said, I have, um, I have like a, I have knee pain that causes spasms in my hip so those muscle relaxers help me minimize those spasms so me taking a half a muscle relaxer melatonin max dose knocked me clean out and I was able to sleep all night without getting up and when I got up in the morning I played some very soothing R&B music and um, what else I played that all the way while I was getting dressed telling myself my, my own little mantra that I pretty much know everything that I study I studied my behind off I know the information I know how to you know do this and do that I know enough I can't learn everything in a day because there's always going to be new information out there that you know you didn't know but at the same time you got to understand that if you studied your butt off every day all day and you put in the work you're gonna pass you're gonna pass if you've already done the work didn't pass as far as um throughout your practice exams and you looked at everything and you know where your areas are as far as your struggling areas when you were taking the test even if you don't have the printout you can pretty much know like all the questions that you did you know which ones you kind of paused on which ones you kind of struggled with which ones you kind of you know weren't too fond of with the whole process of how to pick the questions so with that it's almost like you can kind of have an idea of where your struggle areas are and that's something that will help you kind of identify where you need to focus on and once you focused in those gray areas and you see major improvement you know you've done what you needed to do and you've done the work so always always give yourself a pat on the back if you're putting in the work if you're just not doing anything then you pat not passing should not be a surprise the outcome being very negative should not be a surprise so i always try to make sure that anytime i'm giving advice whether it's to myself whether it's to other people if you don't put the work in you should not expect positive a positive outcome that's even with a relationship that's even with self um self building if you don't put in the work to recognize where your areas are what you need to work on as a person and what you need to do you shouldn't be surprised that you're not changing or evolving as a person the older you get so it's like you just have to make sure that if you want something you want to pass you want to get to where you want to be you've got to put in the work and that is what this video and all my videos that I've posted since my journey started as a respiratory therapy student that you cannot get through something that you want badly without putting in the work God is not gonna bless you if you don't put in the work that's almost with a relationship or just yourself you can't expect change if you don't change so if you don't put in the major work that's needed how can you be surprised that you don't pass an exam? You don't pass your, you don't do well in your homework. You don't do well in clinicals. You don't do well on a job because you don't have what it takes to understand the meaning behind working hard. And to this day, 
Even though I am done with respiratory school, I am learning new things every day as a therapist. Whether I'm an RRT, CRT, or just a, a therapist that's registered. And that's just a registration to the state, you know, on a temporary license. You learn stuff every day. There's new um, studies going around. There's new protocols being practiced at different facilities. There's different information that's going to be presented to you no matter what job you do, whether it's at a different hospital. Because I worked at two different hospitals. Procedures are totally the, not the same. They do things that we don't do at my job in Alabama that they do in Georgia. So it's like you have to be mindful that just because what you learned in Kettering, Kettering is teaching you how to pass your test, how to understand the concept of how to fix a disease, have critical thinking, everything. You're not going to really become a great therapist until you actually work. So that is why I've always told you guys that if you have the opportunity to become an intern, do it. Even if it's just going there to learn the equipment and all of this stuff like that, that's good too. Me personally, I don't like positions like that because it doesn't really give me the concept of what I want to do. To me, I felt like my job in Alabama gave me the foundation to actually be able to be more comfortable when I actually passed my exam and I came out of that student position because when you're a student, you still do the things like a, a normal respiratory therapist. The only restrictions we had was we could not run the ICU alone. We could not um, do a code alone. We could not do any of those things. But my thing is, as a respiratory therapist now with my RRT, I've gotten to do way more because of the restrictions being lifted because I'm no longer a student, but also being able to get more confidence being out there on the floor, being able to stand on what I believe in to these doctors that I know would work because I've done it before, and also being more comfortable to explain stuff and provide education to patients' family that might not be familiar with respiratory protocols and what we do because you're going to run into a lot of patients whose family members are doctors, nurses, physicians, assistants, anything that coordinates with the medical field, you're going to have people try to overlook what you're saying and say is wrong. But you've got the education, you've got the knowledge, you've got everything that you have as a foundation as a therapist to know how to execute your delivery when it comes to providing information to not only the patient but the patient's family because I feel like they appreciate you more when you provide them with information than to let them know that you don't know but if you happen to not know it's okay to tell them I don't know let me find someone that does or this is what I know to be true based on what we practice here so that is something that I would highly recommend um, I would not recommend working full time when you are in the process of studying for your board exams because like I stated earlier in this vlog it was very difficult for me I had to find my study time at work because I would sleep all day at, at home because I work night shift so that was another thing that was like a um, challenge in my process of taking my sims um, my work schedule was never accommodated in ways because of the staffing numbers and then also mandatory shifts so it was like I had to keep rescheduling my sims um, and then on top of that, you know, just being able to be financially stable, that was another thing too, because when you have things to do, your bills are not going to stop because you're studying for your board exams. So I do understand if you have to go to work full time or you just have to work more than one job, period. But in my opinion, I would not do it if you don't have to. If you have a great support system, I had a great support system, but I had my own accumulated bills that I had to pay down and I had to take care of. So that was another reason why I had to um, work. And then also I was under scholarship. So as soon as I passed my first exam, I had to be full time. So I couldn't get around that. So that was also a challenge within itself, but I did it. I made time, I was very organized, I didn't procrastinate, I did what I had to do, and I passed. So um, I would definitely take heed to those recommendations that I gave you guys because it was hard for me. Um, and just go for it, you know what I'm saying? Do what you have to do and put the work in, like I said, and just try your best to just 
make sure that even though you're spending hell of a lot of money just to study for an exam that's 200 plus dollars it's all going to be worth it in the end because life has gotten a whole lot better for me since i have passed my exams and i know it will for you guys as well um i'm going to wrap this vlog up here um like i said i'm going to link that mark vargas powerpoint at the bottom for you guys and let me know if you guys have problems opening it but i don't think you should and um also check out those links in the first video because they are going to be helpful and then um do everything that i'm telling y'all to do in these videos because it took me a while to get the resources that i had to study with so me having the opportunity to pass my information along I want you guys to have it a little bit more easier because a lot of people think that respiratory school is easy but it is not I feel like it's just as hard as nursing school if not harder because nursing has one exam we have two soon they're supposed to combine them but I feel like the test is just gonna get harder so if y'all have the opportunity to take y'all um, uh, exams before this test combines I would get it out the way I would get it out the way maintain you guys credentials and do what you have to do don't let your credentials lap because it's going to take a hell of a lot to get it back because i think when you let your um credentials lapse you have to take that those two exams over again and ain't no way in hell i'm doing it after years and years of practicing as an rt and it being a while since i've had to take my exams so i would make sure y'all stay on top of that so I have a few errands to run today. Also, if you guys are watching this vlog, um, again, thank you, thank you for the support and everything. I am going to be working on another daily vlog because I am going to Florida again um, this upcoming week, but I'm going to Tampa this time with a friend. I'm going to a concert. Um, I am working on that vlog for the 50 Cent concert, but I might just combine um, the 50 Cent concert daily weekly stuff and the concert with tampa together because i didn't really get to vlog at the um 50 cent one because i was having fun me and my friend was turning up for our little girls weekend and it was both our birthdays so we kind of our birthdays are in the same week so we kind of was doing our thing with that so um i am working on that so i'm definitely going to vlog when i go to tampa this week so if you guys are watching this video, it's probably going to be like after I come back from Tampa or maybe before. And um, what else? What else? What else? That's pretty much it. But I have so many other vlogs that I am going to be working on. I have been making notes in my iPad. So I am going to be putting some stuff up there. And I'm definitely going to do another sit down um, vlog um, of updating you guys on my on everything. Not personal personal because i'm not putting my personal stuff on here but just updating y'all on my life and what i got going on and what um i have not shared with y'all yet so be looking out for that but i'm definitely gonna be back on my uploading um game because i know i've been gone for a minute but um i gotta run some errands and i gotta get myself prepared this week for my trip and then i have to go back to work tuesday so i will be checking in with y'all please um make sure y'all um check the community posts every so often because i am starting to post on that now um ig i post here and there but i'm mostly posting on youtube on my community posts so y'all just you know look out for that and if there's any updates on there just check it to see if i posted anything and um i will let y'all know if there's anything different but i'm definitely going to be um linking a lot more stuff to help y'all study so if y'all have any more questions just do what y'all been doing um comment under the videos inbox me on instagram whatever y'all feel y'all want to do and if y'all have any issues with like wanting to study or something which i don't think y'all would because i think all the links that i provided in the part one video should give y'all all the help y'all need on top of the resources that i'm providing with y'all in these videos so um let me know if y'all have any more questions and i will answer them in the next one and again thank you guys for um subscribing to my channel we're gonna keep going and try to get at least 300 subscribers if not by the end of this year at least by the start of next year because we're gonna start our year off great positivity blessings all of that and i will see you guys in the next vlog